Ever-Increasing Faith, Chapter 2, by Smith Wigglesworth. Chapter 2, Deliverance to the Captives. Read Luke 4, 1 through 20. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. He left the Jordan River, and the Spirit led him into the desert for forty days. The devil tried to make him do wrong. Jesus did not eat in those forty days. Then he was very hungry. The devil said to him, If you are God's son, tell this stone to be changed into bread. Jesus answered him, The holy writings say, Man cannot live only on bread. The devil took Jesus to a high place where he could see all the countries of the world at one time. He said to Jesus, I will give you the right to rule over all these countries. They will make you great. All this has been given to me. I can give it to anyone I want. So if you worship and give honor to me, all will be yours. Jesus answered him, The holy writings say, You must worship the Lord your God, and he is the only one you are to worship. The devil took Jesus to Jerusalem. He put him on a high part of the temple. He said to him, If you are God's son, jump down. The holy writings say, God will tell his angels to take care of you, and they will hold you up in their hands so that you will not knock your foot on a stone. Jesus answered him, The holy writings say, You must not put the Lord your God to a foolish test. When the devil finished all his testing, he left him for a while. Jesus had the power of the Spirit when he went back to Galilee. People talked about him in all that part of the country. He taught them in their meeting houses. All the people praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had grown up. He went to the meeting house as he always did on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read. A man gave him the book that Isaiah the prophet of God wrote long ago. He opened the book and found the place where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he chose me to tell the good news to poor people. He has sent me to tell the prisoners they can go free and to tell the blind people they can see. He has sent me to set free those who have been wrongly held down and to tell people that the year when the Lord will help them has come. Then Jesus closed the book and gave it back to the man. He sat down. Everyone in the meeting house was watching him. Our precious Lord Jesus has everything for everybody. Forgiveness of sin healing of diseases, and the fullness of the Spirit all come from one source, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear him who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as he announces the purpose for which he came. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus had been baptized by John in Jordan, and the Holy Spirit had descended in a bodily shape, like a dove, upon him. Being full of the Holy Ghost, he had been led by the Spirit into the wilderness there to come off more than conqueror over the arch enemy. Then he returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee and preached in the synagogues, and at last he came to his old hometown, Nazareth, where he announced his mission in the words I have just quoted. For a brief while he ministered on the earth and then gave his life a ransom for all. But God raised him from the dead, And before he went to the glory, he told his disciples that they too should receive the power of the Holy Ghost upon them. Thus through them 
His gracious ministry would continue. This power of the Holy Ghost was not only for a few apostles, but even for them that are afar off, even as many as our God should call, Acts 2.39, even for us in this 20th century, Acts 2.39, Amplified Bible. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is two and four, you and your children, and two and four, all that are far away, even two and four, as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself. Some ask, but was not this power just for the privileged few in the first century? No, read the Master's Great Commission as recorded by Mark, and you will see it is for them that believe. After I had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I know that I received, for the Lord gave me the Spirit in just the same way as he gave him to the disciples at Jerusalem, I sought the mind of the Lord as to why I was baptized. One day I came home from work and went into the house, and my wife asked me, Which way did you come in? I told her that I had come in at the back door. She said, There is a woman upstairs, and she has brought an old man of eighty to be prayed for. He is raving up there, and a great crowd is outside the front door, ringing the doorbell and wanting to know what is going on in the house. The Lord quietly whispered, This is what I baptized you for. I carefully opened the door of the room where the man was, desiring to be obedient to what my Lord would say to me. The man was crying and shouting in distress. I am lost! I am lost! I have committed the unpardonable sin! I am lost! I am lost! My wife said, Dad, what shall we do? The Spirit of the Lord moved me to cry out, Come out, thou lying spirit! In a moment the evil spirit went, and the man was free. Deliverance to the captives! And the Lord said to me, This is what I baptized you for. There is a place where God, through the power of the Holy Ghost, reigns supreme in our lives. The Spirit reveals, unfolds, takes of the things of Christ, and shows them to us, and prepares us to be more than a match for satanic forces. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he said, We know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was impressed by the miracles wrought, and Jesus pointed out the necessity of a miracle being wrought with every man who would see the kingdom. When a man is born of God, he is brought from darkness to light, a mighty miracle is wrought. Jesus saw every touch by God as a miracle. And so we may expect to see miracles wrought today. It is wonderful to have the Spirit of the Lord upon us. I would rather have the Spirit of God on me for five minutes than to receive a million dollars. Do you see how Jesus mastered the devil in the wilderness? He knew he was the Son of God, and Satan came along with an if. How many times has Satan come along to you this way? He says, after all, you may be deceived. You know you really are not a child of God. If the devil comes along and says that you are not saved, it is a pretty sure sign that you are. When he comes and tells you that you are not healed, it may be taken as good evidence that the Lord has sent his word and healed you. The devil knows that if he can capture your thought life, he has won a mighty victory over you. His great business is injecting thoughts, but if you are pure and holy, you will instantly shrink from them. God wants us to let the mind that was in Christ Jesus, that pure, holy, humble mind of Christ, be in us. I come across people everywhere I go who are held bound by deceptive conditions And these conditions have come about simply because they have allowed the devil to make their minds the place of his stronghold. 
How are we to guard against this? The Lord has provided us with weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds of the enemy, and by means of which every thought shall be brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ and his mighty name are an antidote to all the subtle seeds of unbelief that Satan would sow in your minds. In the first chapter of Acts, we see that Jesus gave commandment to the disciples that they should wait for the promise of the Father, and he told them that not many days hence they would be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Luke tells us that he had written his former treatise concerning all that Jesus began both to do and teach. The ministry of Christ did not end at the cross, but the Acts and the Epistles give us accounts of what he continued to do and teach through those whom he indwelt. And our blessed Lord Jesus is still alive and continues his ministry through those who are filled with his Spirit. He is still healing the brokenhearted and delivering the captives through those on whom he places his spirit. I was traveling one day in a railway train in Sweden. At one station there boarded the train an old lady with her daughter. The old lady's expression was so troubled that I inquired what was the matter with her. I heard that she was going to the hospital to have her leg taken off. She began to weep as she told that the doctors had said there was no hope for her except through having her leg amputated. She was seventy years old. I said to my interpreter, Tell her that Jesus can heal her. The instant this was said to her, it was as though a veil was taken off her face. It became so light. We stopped at another station and the carriage filled up with people. There was a rush of men to board that train, and the devil said, You're done! But I knew I had the best proposition, for hard things are always opportunities to get to the Lord more glory when he manifests his power. Every trial is a blessing. There have been times when I have been pressed through circumstances, and it seemed as if a dozen road engines were going over me. But I have found that the hardest things are just lifting places into the grace of God. We have such a lovely Jesus. He always proves himself to be such a mighty deliverer. He never fails to plan the best things for us. The train began moving, and I crouched down, and in the name of Jesus, commanded the disease to leave. The old lady cried, I'm healed! I know I'm healed! She stamped her leg and said, I'm going to prove it! So when we stopped at another station, she marched up and down and shouted, I'm not going to the hospital! Once again, our wonderful Jesus had proven himself a healer of the brokenhearted, a deliverer of one that was bound. At one time I was so bound that no human power could help me. My wife was looking for me to pass away. There was no help. At that time I had just had a faint glimpse of Jesus as the healer. For six months I had been suffering from appendicitis, occasionally getting temporary relief. I went to the mission of which I was pastor, but I was brought to the floor in awful agony and they brought me home to my bed. All night I was praying, pleading for deliverance, but none came. My wife was sure it was my home call and sent for a physician. He said that there was no possible chance for me. My body was too weak. Having had the appendicitis for six months, my whole system was drained, and because of that, he thought that it was too late for an operation. He left my wife in a state of broken-heartedness. After he left, there came to our door a young man and an old lady. I knew that she was a woman of real prayer. They came upstairs to my room. This young man jumped on the bed and commanded the evil spirit to come out of me. He shouted, Come out, you devil! I command you to come out in the name of Jesus! There was no chance for an argument 
or for me to tell him that I would never believe that there was a devil inside of me. The thing had to go in the name of Jesus, and it went, and I was instantly healed. I arose and dressed and went downstairs. I was still in the plumbing business, and I asked my wife, Is there any work in? I am all right now, and I am going to work. I found there was a certain job to be done, and I picked up my tools and went off to do it. Just after I left, the doctor came in, put his plug hat down in the hall, and walked up to the bedroom. But the invalid was not there. "'Where is Mr. Wigglesworth?' he asked. "'Oh, doctor, he's gone out to work,' said my wife. "'You'll never see him alive again,' said the doctor. "'They'll bring him back a corpse.' "'Well, I'm the corpse.' Since that time, in many parts of the world, the Lord has given me the privilege of praying for people with appendicitis, and I have seen a great many people up and dressed within a quarter of an hour from the time I prayed for them. We have a living Christ who is willing to meet people on every line. A number of years ago, I met Brother D. W. Kerr, and he gave me a letter of introduction to a brother in Zion City named Cook. I took his letter to Brother Cook, and he said, God has sent you here. He gave me the addresses of six people and asked me to go and pray for them and meet him again at 12 o'clock. I got back at about 12.30, and he told me about a young man who was to be married the following Monday. His sweetheart was in Zion City, dying of appendicitis. I went to the house and found that the physician had just been there and had pronounced that there was no hope. The mother was nearly distracted and was pulling her hair and saying, Is there no deliverance? I said to her, Woman, believe God and your daughter will be healed and be up and dressed in 15 minutes. But the mother went on screaming. They took me into the bedroom, and I prayed for the girl and commanded the evil spirit to depart in the name of Jesus. She cried, I'm healed! I said to her, Do you want me to believe that you are healed? If you are healed, get up. She said, You get out of the room and I'll get up. In less than ten minutes, the doctor came in. He wanted to know what had happened. She said, A man came in and prayed for me, and I'm healed. The doctor pressed his finger right in the place that had been so sore, and the girl neither moaned nor cried. He said, This is God. It made no difference whether he acknowledged it or not. I knew that God had worked. Our God is real in saving and healing power today. Our Jesus is just the same yesterday and today and forever. He saves and heals today just as of old, and he wants to be your Savior and your healer. Oh, if you would only believe God, what would happen The greatest things. Some have never tasted the grace of God, have never had the peace of God. Unbelief robs them of these blessings. It is possible to hear and yet not conceive the truth. It is possible to read the word and not share in the life it brings. It is necessary for us to have the Holy Ghost to unfold the word and to bring to us the life that is Christ. We can never fully understand the wonders of this redemption until we are full of the Holy Ghost. I was once at an afternoon meeting. The Lord had been graciously with us, and many had been healed by the power of God. Most of the people had gone home, and I was left alone when I saw a young man who was evidently hanging back to have a word. I asked, What do you want? He said, I wonder if I could ask you to pray for me. I said, what's the trouble? He said, can't you smell? The young fellow had gone into sin and was suffering the consequences. He said, I have been turned out of two hospitals. I am broken out all over. I have abscesses all over me. And I could see that he had a bad breaking out at the nose. He said, I heard you preach and could not understand about this healing business and was wondering if there was any hope for me. I said to him, Do you know Jesus? He did not know the first thing about salvation. But I said to him, Stand still. 
I placed my hands on his head and then on his loins and cursed that terrible disease in the name of Jesus. He cried out, I know I'm healed. I can feel a warmth and a glow all over me. I said, Who did it? He said, Your prayers. I said, No, it was Jesus. He said, Was it he? Oh, Jesus, 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 save me. And that young man went away healed and saved. Oh, what a merciful God we have. What a wonderful Jesus is ours. Are you oppressed? Cry out to God. It is always good for people to cry out. You may have to cry out. The Holy Ghost and the Word of God will bring to light every hidden, unclean thing that must be revealed. There is always a place of deliverance when you let God search out that which is spoiling and marring your life. That evil spirit that was in the man in the synagogue cried out, Let us alone! It was a singular thing that the evil spirit had never cried out like that until Jesus walked into the place where he was. Jesus rebuked the thing, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And the man was delivered. He is just the same Jesus, exposing the powers of evil, delivering the captives, and letting the oppressed go free, purifying them and cleansing their hearts. Those evil spirits that inhabited the man who had the legion did not want to be sent to the pit to be tormented before their time, and so they cried out to be sent into the swine. Hell is such an awful place that even the demons hate the thought of going there. How much more should men seek to be saved from the pit? God is compassionate and says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And he has further stated, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Seek him now. Call on his name right now. And there is forgiveness, healing, redemption, deliverance, and everything you need for you right here and now, and that which will satisfy you throughout eternity. Blessings in Australia. Sister Winnie Andrews, North Melbourne, Australia, writes, Our brother Wigglesworth landed here February 16th and had a meeting that very night. The dear Lord was present, and that to heal. A little girl of six, having never walked, after she had been prayed for, walked out of the front door with her mother, who was full of joy for what the Lord had done for her little one. Another man who had been suffering with bad feet for years and walked only with the aid of a stick was instantly healed and has been along several times to testify to what the Lord has done for him. Many deaf people have been delivered in answer to the prayer of faith. One night, a dear man and his wife, whom he brought to the meeting in a wheelchair, were both healed. He had been suffering from deafness for twenty years, and she had not walked for over six and a half years. After prayer, she got out of her chair and walked to the station, with her husband pushing the empty chair. He, too, was rejoicing in that he was now able to hear perfectly. Oh, what a wonderful God we have! Blessed be his holy name! At the Sunday afternoon service, a dear young woman who had been suffering with tuberculosis for 13 years and who was in the last stages came leaning on the arm of a friend and was prayed for. At once she received new life and was perfectly delivered. The terrible burning sores which were eating their way into her bones have dried up and are peeling off, and she is looking so well and happy and is as strong as can be. Glory to God! Last night a young man suffering from consumption was prayed for and was instantly made whole. Oh, our hearts overflow at the glorious things God is doing in our midst. Many have been healed of neuritis, heart and lung trouble, and stiff joints. One woman who had not walked for 22 years and could not as much as turn her head. After prayer, 
got out of bed and walked. Praise God! Pentecostal Evangel, April 15, 1922